Hey everybody, I am David and today I want to talk about the Disney Renaissance era. Now some of you are probably wondering what is the Disney Renaissance era? Uh, the Disney Renaissance era is one of my favorite mo times of Disney. I was going to say moments, but times uh, where Disney animation was at the height of its peak, I think. Uh, I found this on Wikipedia. I think it says it really nicely there. Uh, the Disney Renaissance era refers to the era beginning roughly in 1989 and ending with 1999, which Walt Disney Animation Studios returned to making more musical animated films that were mostly based on well-known stories, and it allowed Disney animated films to become powerhouse uh, successes at the domestic and foreign box office, making much more profit than most other Disney films of the past. Um, and I think that's really true because if you do go back and look at Dis Disney's legacy, especially in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, animated films were – Disney's animated films uh, were starting to go down a bit in the box office, not making as much profit as past films used to, the past successes of the likes of like – Dumbo or the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or Cinderella, Lady and the Tramp, etc. Uh, those were the, the huge films back in their day. And by the 80s specifically, animation was starting to die. Uh, there were some hits from some of the other studios, like I believe Land Before Times was a pretty big hit, but nothing to the degree of what Disney would bring later on in the 90s. Um, some people would say Who Framed Roger Rabbit was the the spark, uh, and I kind of agree with that. I, I think it did bring a renewed interest to animation, uh, but I also think that had to do more with the help of Steven Spielberg producing that movie and Robert Zemeckis directing it um, and being also live action and animation, a hybrid of the two, uh, that that's the reason Who Framed Roger Rabbit did good. I think there were many factors, but specifically Steven Spielberg, who is a really big director. Uh, he still is a big director. He's one of the best. Uh, but he was uh, already coming off of successes like Indiana Jones, the, tr the trilogy, as well as uh, Jaws and Close Encounters and E.T. So Spielberg was already even producing a lot of really cool films like uh, The Goonies. Um and then we got Disney Animation coming out, their first success in 1989 with uh, The Little Mermaid, um, with music done by Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, who collaborated and made the films feel different from the Disney movies from the past. If you listen to the music in in the classic films like Cinderella and Peter Pan and, and those films, uh, the music does sound very different, you know? there There was a different element to it. Uh, and then these ones sounded more like your Broadway plays, like they were more theatrical than the Disney movies of the past. And uh, that's where I think they really got it right. I think people really do like musicals, uh, but maybe didn't realize the kind of musicals they wanted until these films. That's why I think Beauty and the Beast, the remake, did really well. Look, that was a live action film and that did really well and people wanted to go see it. Um, and then you got, you know, other uh, musicals starting to make a rise. Uh, there was that one with uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone that is escaping me for some reason. But uh, you guys get the point. Um, musicals can can do successful and Disney Animation was proving that once again in the 90s. And uh, so let's go through this list of all these films that they've had. I'm not going to go too much in depth into them because you guys should already know them. And if you haven't seen them, check these movies out because these to me are my childhood. Uh, I was a kid and I was starting to get in my teenage phase by the late 90s. Uh, by the time I got into high school, it was like 1997. So uh, these were the films that in the beginning I remember being resentful against Disney for some reason. I, I was like one of those kids that's like, I don't care for these cartoon Disney films. And then as I got older, I started realizing how great these movies actually are. And sometimes I do thank my parents back then for bringing me along to some of the earlier ones to see them in theaters, as well as my godfather who took me to see some, a few more uh, with his uh, kid growing up. Um, and... 
So let's get right into this. This is the beginning and the end of the Disney era from 1989 to 1999. Uh, in 1989, the first Disney Renaissance era film was The Little Mermaid. Uh, that was the first one that started it all. <laughs> and we haven't gotten a remake of it yet, but we will. Uh, and then we move on to 1990, where we get the rescuers down under not only is the rescuers down under the most probably least talked about of these films uh, and the least successful i should say too this is the only one that didn't really make its profit back uh it is the first sequel to a disney film people think return of jafar or you know some of the ones after that were the first disney sequels it's actually this one uh the the rescuer is down under this was the first animated film to be a sequel of a previous animated film that they did and unlike most others some a lot of them went to direct a video this one actually went to theaters uh but people forget about it sometimes because it's right in between two of the the juggernauts uh of that era we then move on to the next juggernaut <laughs> after the little mermaid and, and the forgettable rescuers down under we get beauty and the beast in 1991 obviously this one just had a remake recently i think the animated film holds up uh much better uh only because you watch the remake and you realize did they really need to make this and no they didn't really need to make it especially if you're just gonna do a carbon copy but look i'm glad we have another version of it with slight different changes here and there it's nice to see different interpretations uh, but when you realize, when you pull back and look at it all, you realize eh, it was it was still great as an animated movie. Uh, so let's move on. 1992, we get Aladdin. This is one of my all-time favorite Disney films. Uh, such a great one, and it's it's having a remake coming out next year. So I'm really looking forward to that. How do you replace Robin Williams? Good luck to Will Smith, but I can't wait to see it either way. We then skip a year. 1993 is the only year that didn't have a Disney Renaissance film. Uh, instead, we get 1994's The Lion King, the, the biggest box office juggernaut Disney has had. Well, now Frozen has topped it in a couple of other animated films. But this is the highest grossing uh, animated film of all time. Uh, if you go... 2D animation, I should clarify that. Uh, 2D animation of all time. Uh, it's the only one that I believe made it to a billion dollars. It might be a little bit short of a billion dollars. But uh, yeah, it's the most successful one. I remember when this movie was re-released in theaters uh, back in, I think, 2004 or something like that. Um, for an anniversary year i think it was no it was 2013 or 14 it was going up against the great gatsby with leonardo dicaprio and the lion king beat it was a re-release the lion king beat the great gaps gatsby in theaters a leonardo dicaprio film it blew my mind it blew a lot of people's minds because it's like this is a movie with leonardo dicaprio who's already becoming a huge success and i think that was after inception uh which was an amazing film uh, so to have The Lion King a re-release beat out a new movie with Leonardo DiCaprio was crazy. And uh, I can't wait for that live-action remake being done by Jon Favreau. That's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, we then move on to 1995. This is probably one of the lesser successful but still made a profit back uh, Pocahontas. Um, this is a great movie as well. Uh, who doesn't love this movie? I don't know. I, I know it's not the most successful, but I actually do enjoy this movie. I know my mom loves the song uh, Colors of the Wind. Uh, a lot of people probably would. I think these are the movies where Disney was actually winning a lot of Academy Awards for Best Original Song at the time. Uh, so no surprise there. Uh, we then move on to 1996 with The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, I consider this to be the most underrated Disney film. Again, it did pretty, it did okay in theaters, but not huge. This is where, after The Lion King, that's where the Disney Renaissance films were starting to slow down a bit. They they weren't bombs, but they weren't successes like the other four were, um, or five, I guess. Well, they were, yeah, you get it. Um, unfortunately, 
Uh, I think this is a great movie, and I think more people should go back and check it out. I don't hear it in the discussion enough, when pe- unless it's like hardcore movie fans like myself and people that did go back to rediscover it uh, um, say how great of a movie and underappreciated it is. So if you haven't seen this movie, go check it out. This is one that I think would do really well as a live-action remake. I think maybe it... It was a darker film compared to the other ones, and maybe that's why people weren't uh, gravitating towards it at the time, but uh, we'll see. Uh, moving on to 1997, we get Hercules, um, and this one was more of a spoof of Greek mythology. It kind of poked fun at Greek mythology in a way, um, while maintaining a few things here and there from the myth um, that they would point out once in a while, and uh, they borrowed a little bit from Superman as well. I feel like this was Disney's attempt at really a Superman movie, and they were like, well, we can't do Superman because Warner Brothers has that, uh, but let's do a Hercules movie instead. I mean, he's super strong too. We can mix and match a little bit here and there. So, uh, I, I mean, I swear, watch the beginning of this movie when Superman lands on Earth and he's taken by... Uh, Ma and Pa Kent it's not Ma and Pa Kent but they, they're clearly ripping off the Kents during that scene uh, so I don't know just things that I notice and other people notice too So, uh, but it's still a fun movie it's from the directors of Aladdin uh, as well as I think they worked on The Little Mermaid as well it's a, it's a really fun film so if you haven't seen that one go check it out uh, and then we move on to 1998's Mulan this was a pretty successful one uh when this one came out it wasn't as huge as the lion king or aladdin or beauty and the beast but it was up there uh doing better than some of the previous ones that i just mentioned uh and this one's getting a live action remake as well which i'm looking forward to uh yeah mulan is based on the chinese myth or legend and um I really enjoy it, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Eddie Murphy does the voice of Mushu, the dragon. (laughs) I think he's hysterical in this movie, and I think the the supporting cast is really good, too, and the main character as well. Uh, The villain, not so much, but that's because he doesn't get much to do, uh, which is not about that. It's about this girl wanting to do the right thing to save her father, and she does that. And uh, it was great hearing Eddie Murphy at the time. This was before he did Shrek, Donkey, the voice of Donkey in Shrek. Uh, So it already showed that, hey, this guy could be the next Robin Williams in a way, (laughs) doing his own thing, but still stealing the show. Uh, And then finally, we move on to 1999's Tarzan. This was the end of an era. Uh, Tarzan was really the last great, Disney film in my opinion well until more recently as we as I'll get into uh, Tarzan was the one that they tried changing things up it wasn't your theatrical music this was uh, one guy making music Phil Collins uh, doing the the songs for this movie they didn't use uh, Alan uh, Menken Howard Ashman had already passed away after Aladdin uh, from my understanding so Alan Menken, uh, I guess, didn't do uh, the, the, the songs for this one. Instead, it was Phil Collins. And uh, the music worked really well, actually. I, I really love the soundtrack of Tarzan. I think there's some great songs. Son of Man. Uh, <laughs> the Son of Man is the one I can think of right now because that's my favorite one. Uh, You'll Be In My Heart, etc. There's a lot of great songs in this one. And the animation is great in this movie, too. You could start to see... Uh, well, they've been always integrating uh, CGI backgrounds once in a while into it or making so- certain things. Like the water in this movie was CGI sometimes, which was really cool. It added a really nice effect. I think this is the one where it started sit, um, showing a little bit more in a good way. Because uh, sometimes people think, oh, if you see it, that means it must be bad. No, it's not special effects. This is animation and it makes the animation feel more uh, real and more well-rounded, I th- thought. Um, but yeah, it was a great movie and, uh, hopefully more people check it out. It was, I know they did a direct-to-video sequel. They did a direct-to-video sequel of practically all these movies. 
which were terrible, except for the Aladdin sequels. I liked Return of the Jafar, and I liked Aladdin and the King of Thieves, and I thought Simba's Pride, The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride was pretty good too. Um, Lion King 1 and a half is okay. Uh, but other than that, yeah, the Disney sequels, most of them sucked. Uh, but yeah, that's the Disney Renaissance era, guys. So it started with The Little Mermaid, ends with Tarzan. And now I feel like, yeah, we have been getting a second renaissance with films like Tangled and Frozen and Wreck-It Ralph. I feel like these are the new, this is the new renaissance of Disney because now you're seeing them have hit after hit again. Uh, maybe some of that had to do with Pixar and Disney being merged together because John Lasseter, who is now fired from both uh, from from the company, Disney as a whole, uh, is gone. But when he was put in charge of both animations, studios, Pixar and Disney, uh, he clearly there was something there that was being improved on. Uh, I would even say I noticed it during Princess and the Frog in 2009 when that movie came out because I think that movie is an underrated movie as well um, which didn't should have got more attention especially when you have the first African-American princess um, I I saw that movie I really enjoyed it uh, even that Winnie the Pooh animated movie that they did I thought was really enjoyable I didn't see that one in theaters but I saw it later on on blu-ray I should have supported it in theaters sometimes it's good to support good movies guys and uh, to see 2D animation die off for good now after those two, when those two were the comeback of Disney animation, because the last one before Princess and the Frog, which came out in 2009, was 2004's Home on the Range, which was a terrible Disney animated film. So, look, I don't know why certain things work and certain things don't. I'm just happy the Renaissance era feels like it's back. It feels like this is the Renaissance part two uh, coming back for us because they have the music again like Moana I thought the soundtrack for Moana was beautiful and Frozen's soundtrack was also really good and look sometimes you don't even need a, a, a musical uh, to be a successful Disney film as um, Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia have proved they don't even have songs like the olden days but they also have proven successful so Disney has found, somehow found uh, their groove back and I hope they keep it up as well as experimenting with movies like Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia I hope to see more films like that as well not everything needs to be a musical give us a good mix of a lot of things Big uh, Hero 6 is another great example that was based off a Marvel property uh, so there is a lot of good movies out there guys and tell me what is your favorite era of Disney do you love the Disney Renaissance era like I do? Do you love this new one just as much? I think this new one feels like those type of films that I used to love back in the 90s and I'm glad they're back. So leave your comments below. I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe to my channel, especially if you're a huge Disney fan, Marvel fan, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, or Pixar. I love them all. And until next time, take care.